Hi everyone, today I'm hopefully going to show you how to migrate from Absence or Ivanti um, desktop now profiles to FS Logics profile containers. Now, this is a fairly non trivial way of doing it, so hopefully, you've been reading the article that I posted, which should be down there I'm thinking <laughs> um, if I've got my positioning right in the description if you're watching this from a desktop or laptop computer if you're on a mobile not sure where the link will be but it's definitely in the description for the video so please use this in conjunction with the article because it's a fairly non-trivial um, way of getting there um, if you're an Avanti customer or an AppSense customer you probably know that um, obviously Avanti AppSense Environment Manager personalization server saves all of your user profile settings into an SQL database and kind of layers them in when the user logs in. Mostly you use mandatory profiles for this in Citrix or remote desktop session host environments, so that's where I've attacked this from. If you're doing it from a local profiles perspective, it'll probably be a bit simpler. So just to run through the kind of prerequisites. First of all, I'm going to take, we do a kind of three tiered approach to this. So I'm going to talk about PMO systems, which is, you know, how you're doing it now with your AppSense or your Avanti um, desktop now instances. Then we're going to have an intermediate method of operation where we have some servers that have both Avanti agents and configs and the FS Logics apps agent all installed on there together so we can do the migration. We also have FMO, future method of operation services, which just have our new age with just FS Logics on, which is where hopefully we want to migrate all of the settings to. Now, First things first, um, firstly some kind of bad news unfortunately, if you are going to do this migration from Ivanti profiles, AppSense profiles to FS Logics profile containers, you need to be on Ivanti User Workspace Manager Desktop Now version 10 or above because we need to move the data between personalization groups. So if you're on version 10 like I am, you know, here, you're okay, you should be good to go. If you're on version eight, this is very, very difficult, to be perfectly honest. You'll need to get a script from Ivanti support that lets you move data from one personalization group to the other. And when we move our user from the PMO system, the Ivanti system, into the migration phase, you'll need to perform that migration. If you've got the script, you can maybe trigger it automatically somehow. But I'm actually thinking, as I've said in the article, if you are on version eight, it may just be easier possibly even to give the users new profiles. It's a probably a lot of work for not much gain. But if you're on version 10 or you can upgrade to version 10 or higher, then all is good. You should be able to do it with this three tiered model. So make sure you're on version 10 or above. Now, first thing I mentioned in the article that you need to do, let's switch to a domain controller over here. You need to create three distinct Active Directory groups to drive these different environments. So if we look here, I've created a group called PMO, which is our PMO group, which I've got our test user who is called JRank and three. He's in that group at the minute, so he's still using the old Avanti stuff. We then have an IMO group, which is going to be intermediate method of operation. We will manually move him into that group when we want to kick off the migration process. So we control that part manually. And then finally, when he's finished the migration, he'll be automatically removed from the IMO group and put into the FMO group, which has got a user in it at the minute, which it shouldn't have, so let's whip it out. And then he will be able to log on to the FS Logics enabled server through that. So, other considerations. What you also need to do if you're doing it this way, if you're doing it by Citrix like I am, I have created three different delivery groups from the same image, and I am delivering a different desktop from each. So, pay more delivery group. If we're going to edit this delivery group, you can see that the desktop. It's called PMO Desktop and it's assigned to this group, PMO Group. Exactly the same for the IMO Group and the FMO Group. They are more or less exactly the same image. I think the FMO version might have Edge Chromium Beta installed in there, but as far as we're generally concerned, the same image. And that's what you want to do. Three distinct desktops delivered from the same image. So we can have our user in the present method of operation, migrate them into the staging area, and then finally into the FMO area as well. Now, 
The PMO image, the one that runs on this PMO desktop here, just needs to be your standard image with your standard Avanti agents and configurations installed on there. However, the IMO image is the one that needs the most amount of changes. Uh, let's just remember which server this was. Let's just log on as an admin at the console. What you need to do on this server is make sure that all of your Avanti agents and configurations are installed on there, but also FS Logics apps is also installed on there as well. However, what you want to make sure is that the FS Logics apps is not configured at all. So you can see here we've got FS Logics apps installed, we've also got all the Avanti agents and configs installed, but FS Logics apps is not configured at all. So if I just show you the registry here. If we look in the FS Logics area of the registry, let's just find it. If we go into uh, HK Lock Machine Software FS Logics and into Profiles, you should see here this is completely blank. This key and normally when FS Logics is active around the screen, you have an enabled value in here that's set to one. Now normally people drive this via Group Policy Objects, so if you are using Group Policy Objects, make sure that Group Policy Object doesn't apply to this IMO server as we've called it, right? It needs to have FS Logics on, it needs to have the AppSensive Anti Agents and Config on there, the same as your normal environment, but FS Logics needs to be not enabled at all. So if you're using a GPU on it, applies to this machine, filter this machine out. Now, you also need to make sure PowerShell Constrained Language Mode is not turned on. I did an article recently where I was talking about enabling PowerShell Constrained Language Mode to reduce the attack surface of your systems by setting an environment variable called PS Lockdown underscore underscore PS Lockdown Policy, setting it to a value of four. You see on this machine that it's not set. However, as I've said again, if you've got a GPO that's applying that environment variable to your machines, make sure this one is filtered out. And also because it's an environment variable, make sure you actually delete it because it's the sort of thing, an environment variable, when you apply it via a group policy and then remove the group policy, it won't automatically remove itself all of the time unless you actually set the preference to be automatically removed, which is probably a good idea. Also, you need a couple of group policy objects applied specifically to this machine. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, AppSense, Ivanti generally use mandatory profiles as the base to build their profile, then they layer in all the changes from the personalization server on top of that, and then the mandatory profile is then thrown away, which is a cool way of doing things. When you're migrating away, it sends all of the settings back to a local profile, but if you are using a mandatory profile, it will then throw away all the stuff that you want to migrate. So you need to configure this GPO specifically, so if you look over here, Computer config, policies, admin templates, system user profiles. Set the GPO for only allow local user profiles. Set that to enabled. Make sure that applies on this IMO machine only. Also, it would help you to configure this one. Delete user profiles older than a specified number of days. Set that to one so that this machine doesn't get clogged up with lots and lots of user profiles as you save them out locally for migration. Obviously, depending on how you're doing things, you may or may not need to do that. If it's a PBS system and you reboot it, you get rid of them anyway. So those are the things that I'd recommend that they set up. Now, the Avanti configuration that's applied to this machine should be the same one that you apply to your normal, your PMO Avanti servers. However, if we flip across to the Avanti Environment Manager console over here, and I will open up the console that we are you at uh, the console, the configuration that we are using. If you see here, what you need to do is just make sure you add in somewhere in the logon trigger a migration node. Now, what you need to do is first of all create a conditional check for your IMO group. So don't forget your IMO group should only be able to access that IMO server. So this action is only going to run when users are logged on to that IMO server. This folder should, uh, this folder, this um, action underneath this condition should be simply create a folder with the user's username in it in a folder called C colon backslash users to convert. The idea of this is that user logs onto the IMO server, it writes their username into this folder, then when they log out, a scheduled task will look in this folder for any usernames it needs to migrate. It will then perform the migration 
and then it will delete this so it'll only be done once so set that in your environment manager configuration and just apply it to this IMO group only make sure that is applied to your servers the configuration for the advantage should be on your PMO on your IMO servers it'll only that part will only run on the IMO servers so you can add that to an existing config what do we also need to do yeah we need to set up a scheduled task on the IMO image that'll trigger a migration script when the users log off but we'll talk more about that in a second so finally you've got the FMO image which is your new image which is going to use FS logics this system um, I think this is it over here the one that we've got in action this one shouldn't have any event agents or configurations installed at all it needs FS logics installing and on this system FS logics should be enabled so if we run the add remove programs bit you should say that FS logics app is installed but there are no event configurations or anything like that on there now if we run registry editor i'll show you this time that the fs logics policies are applied to this machine actually a lot machine software fs logics profiles you see in there now it is enabled it has the vhd location set up in there which is where it's going to look for its profile store all the stuff is configured so that's ready to receive the fs logics migrated profile now let's just log out of here again before we start and show you the scheduled task and the script that we're going to use, you need to make sure your personalization server is configured correctly. So if you switch to your Avanti console, switch to the user personalization tab. We've got a group here called PMO group, a personalization group. This is essentially the group that you're probably already using, right? So we need to make sure that the membership rules are capturing this PMO group. You may have another group name that you have for that and that one needs to go underneath the IMO group so this one will have all of your application personalization your Windows personalization that you've got set up in there make sure that it's capturing the users in whatever you're using for that you know that present method of operation group however above that you need to set up an IMO group and it has to go above that one so the application personalization the windows personalization should all be the same the differences are the membership rules are for the imo group so users will pick up this personalization group when they go into that imo group and are removed from the pmo group the idea is the big difference on this one is that the profile migration settings as you can see here are not disabled as they normally are they're set to export user settings back to the user profile so remember when the users in this imo group they will log on to that IMO desktop, which takes us to that IMO server, where they're only allowed to use local profiles only. It'll export the user settings back. Then when they log out, it will start migrating those settings to an FS Logics VHD. So those are the differences you need to have on your personalization group level. Maybe just to give you an idea, I'll pull this across here. Um, this is also referenced in the article. It's just a quick PowerPoint of how it's supposed to work. So you can see this above me here. Um, the user logs in. When they're in the PMO group, the normal group, log on to the normal servers, profile is saved to the Avanti database as normal. Then there's a manual intervention when you decide you want to migrate them, move them to the IMO group, remove them from the PMO group. Then when they log on to Storefront or ADC, they will now see the IMO desktop, which is essentially exactly the same. That Avanti profile will be loaded, but it will be exported out to a local profile as well, which it's allowed to do because we're using local profiles only on that server. Next bit, the user logs off from the IMO server. We're going to set up a scheduled task that will run when event ID 4647 is logged. That will then, the script that it runs will then tell it to read any usernames from that C users to convert folder, which is populated by our Avanti config. Then it will start the migration process to the specified file share that we've set in the script. So it'll take their local profile, migrate it to a VHD. Then it'll claim after itself that it'll remove the username from the users to convert folder because it's done. It'll then go into AD and clear any mandatory profile paths from the user's AD object so that it's no longer using a mandatory profile like it would be with Avanti. Then it'll remove them from the IMO group and then it will add them to the FMO group. So next time the user logs on again, now they will see the FMO desktop from the FMO server. When they log on there, it's only using FS Logics, the VHD is set up, and the migration will hopefully be complete. Sound easy? Not in the slightest. But let's give it 
ago. Sorry, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to go back to our IMO server that we've got an admin session on. I don't know why I'm pointing there because it should be up here somewhere. No, there, I think. Let me get my camera angles right. It's up there. So let's go on here and first of all, we need to make sure we've got the script. Now what I've done is I have taken a copy of that script and obviously edited it and I've popped it on my domain controller in a file share called file store profiles. That is then populated down to this machine here. It's literally just dropped it in the C root. You can pop it wherever you want. There it is, export local. And that latest copy of that is always copied down the machines. I always find if you're running a PowerShell script from a scheduled task, have a local copy on the machine. They always seem to run much more reliably. Um, this is the actual script. I don't know why I'm showing you on that tiny screen. I could switch back to my domain controller, give you a much better look at it in the PowerShell ice. Let's just wait for that to open up. Just going to call out a couple of things about this script. Should it ever want to open up? Oh, there it is. So um, it starts off, pulls the usernames in from users to convert, starts looping through. If it can't find the target, so what you'll need to do is obviously set your target file path here. You'll need to change the names of these groups down here to match whatever you've set up in your AD as it moves them around. Um, It'll go down here, and if it can't find the target file path, it'll create it for if you can't find the folder. And then, just to turn attention here, I find sometimes it takes a long time to unload the profile after the user's logged out, so at that point it waits for 60 seconds. Another bit to draw your attention to is, this actually runs the same command twice. For some reason, in my testing, occasionally when running it, it would start migrating the profile, and then the profile disk would just disappear, and the whole script would come to a stop stop with nothing done so it literally runs it twice don't ask me to explain that you simply have to let it run twice in order for it to work reliably the next bit removes it from the IMO group adds it to the FMO group removes the mandatory profile paths and then the final last bit it deletes the folder name that triggered it in the first place so it cleans up after itself so you get this script down on your machine so it's down on this machine here we next need to set up a scheduled task so we can call it a log off. So I'll just quickly run through this bit with you. So if we go in here and choose create basic task, call it migrate profiles, or whatever you want to call it, set it to when a specific event is logged, switch the log source to security, event ID is populate table 4647. Got a list of sources here. That's the one you want. Microsoft Windows Security Auditing. Don't forget, this is the event ID and sources for Windows Server 2019. It may be a bit different if you're using a different operating system, so check that carefully. We want the task to start a program. Now, the important thing to do here is PowerShell.exe is the program you want to start. And then you want to add some arguments. So minus execution policy bypass minus file which tells it which file to execute which in our case is C colon backslash can't remember what I've called it so I'll just quickly check export local dot ps1 export local dot ps1 okay well that's good you will actually notice if you don't if you would just call the script directly from here it actually opens it in notepad instead so pro tip do it like that. Right, don't forget to tick that box for the properties dialog when you click finish and then click finish. What you need to do is change this to run whether the user is logged on or not. Make sure you're using the right user. I'm just going to use a bog standard user. Make sure that user has admin credentials on this IMO box and also make sure that user has access to the file share you've specified because it needs to write files and folders in there. So don't forget about those file permissions. Click the box for run with highest privileges. Change that to Windows Server 2019 in there and click on OK. Then bung the password in and don't get it wrong because you will need that. So there's your scheduled task set up. So now 
when a user logs off from this machine it will look in the c colon backslash users to convert folder if there are any subfolders in there with usernames it'll try and migrate them if there's nothing in there it won't do anything so don't worry about it running and when your admin logs off it will run but it'll just exit pretty quickly so let us i've been talking for 20 minutes we've got the scheduled task done we've got all the bits in there let's give it a test fingers crossed so let's go to Civix receiver format is Civix user J rank and 3 is who we're testing on today so I should have yeah well the pay more desktop here right so let's log on to the pay more desktop this is all managed by AppSense if handy whatever we want to call it so let's just log on to this desktop here So it should be the first time this user's logged on because I deleted all of the data before I started doing this just to show you it in action. So it should give us just a bog standard Windows Server 2019 desktop, as we can see. Now, Ivanti is redirecting the desktops. So we've got a few items already on there. We've got Microsoft Teams on there as well, which for some reason takes an edge to show the icon <laughs> for it. I don't know why. But let's just ignore that foible for now. Let's just make a few cosmetic changes to our desktop. So we ensure that when we finally, hopefully, get logged on to the FS Logics area, that we've migrated everything successfully. So let's give it a really garish screen colour. Let's add a couple of desktop icons that I like to put on there. Let's add my computer control panel on there. Let's get rid of Teams, which has finally decided to appear. Um, let's change a few taskbar settings, set it small, never combine them, I hate combining things on the taskbar, all of those icons there, um, that should do it for now, let's remove the task view button, get a search button, let's faff around with the start tiles a bit, let's move that over there, let's make a pretty shape, <laughs> Change this text as well. It's been changed. Let's just pin a couple of taskbar items. What else can we pin? God, anything. Pin that. There you go. So we've made some cosmetic changes to the way our desktop looks. Let's just rearrange a few things around, maybe. There you go. Okay, we're happy with that. So this machine here is still using Avanti for personalization. So when I log off here, because it's using a monetary profile, I'll actually quickly show you, just so you know I'm not telling lies, that this actually is using a monetary profile, so it'll be purged when it logs off. So if we look in this area of the control panel, look at the settings for the user J ranking 3, you can see there it says type monetary, yeah. So when it logs off, that profile will be discarded, those settings will be saved back to the AppSense database on the personalization server. Now, the first stage of migration, let's flip back to our domain controller. What we want to do is change this user around. So let's find the user account. I don't know where I put it. JRAN3. So we move him, take him out of that pay more group and add him to the IMO group. Okay, on that. Okay, so now he's ready to go into the migration process. Now that process of removing him from one group and adding him to another, you could do that with a script, you could do that loads of different ways, you do it manually, it depends on how many users you've got to do really. But anyway, so let's just refresh storefront here. And you should say now, if I switch to desktop, we now have the IMO desktop. Now this is the desktop that has the Ivanti agents and configurations on there as well, but it will do that little bit that writes it to the um, folder ready for migration. And it also has FS Logix apps installed on there, but not configured. The reason it's on but not configured is because we need to use a component of FS Logix apps called frx.exe to do the migration. So let's get logged on to here now. Should all look exactly the same, but what you should see, hopefully, is that it's actually migrating to the local user profile. So let's just let it start up. You should see we've got all the changes that we made on there. But if we run 
this control panel up like this time. Should say. At this time, the profile type is showing as local. Yeah, so it's now a local profile. Even though it normally uses a mandatory profile, the mandatory profile is defined on that user object. I will show you that over here. Profile has mandatory profile as RDSH profile. It's not using that. Get rid of teams. Rid of that. So. When the user's finished using this session, now with all intents and purposes, the user thinks it's exactly the same. The desktop's just got a slightly different name as he's been migrated. When this user logs off here, what will happen is, hopefully that scheduled task should be initiated. And we should see in here that it creates a folder ready for the user's new VHD file to go in, because this is the file share where it points to. There it is. The folder's been created in the now. Now, don't forget, it now waits 60 seconds before it starts to copy. It's waiting for the profile to fully unload. So we shall give it the 60 seconds for it to unload. What it's going to do, it's going to take that exported local profile copy out of there and hopefully migrate it into a VHDX in that folder. Should be about another 30 seconds. If we're lucky, we might catch a glimpse of it disappearing, which it sometimes does, which is why we run the command twice. Doesn't always happen, but occasionally it does. So about another 10 seconds or so, and it should start that process. So let's jump into this folder now and see if we can see it appear as it performs the migration process. Yeah, it's paired, right? It's 69 meg in size, so 135. Now sometimes here it will it did you say it disappear? Yeah, that's why we run the command twice. It for some reason it just disappears and doesn't continue. It's very, very odd. But running it twice appears to do it. Don't know what foil I've discovered there, or if I'm barking up the wrong tree, but I've been working on this all day. You can say this time it's completing properly though it should be about five hundred meg in size, but Five six hundred meg when it migrates out. So there we go. It appears to have completed and done that there now. Now, if you remember, what it also should have done is it should have tidied up itself. So let's just quickly admin session. Just log on back to this server that we just used for the IMO desktop, just to show you that it's now removed the user's name from that folder. So let that just log on. Totally the wrong place. Of so this uses to convert folders, the one that contains folders with the usernames in. You can see that's now empty. It's cleaned up after itself. Yeah, so that's all good. The other thing that it was going to do is if we go back to Active Directory, pull up the user properties, it should have removed the profile paths. So there you go. The mandatory profile is now removed and it has been removed from the IMO group and added to the FMO group. So then when this user comes along to log on the next time, so let's just refresh Citrix Receiver here again, go to desktops, we now have an FMO desktop, and this is the one that's just using FS logics. So if I click on this desktop to launch it, what will we say now? Hopefully it should pick up that VHD that we've just created, that VHDX rather, and show us the settings that we created in App Sense Ivanti. We've now completely migrated across to FS Logics. Did mention that this image, for some reason, annoyingly has Edge Chromium installed on it, so that will be the one slightly different thing. But there we've got our hideous desktop color on there. We've got our pinned items on the taskbar. We've got our shortcuts um, on the desktop. We've also got Edge Beta added there as well. And you should be able to see I've got my text and my start menu that I changed. So the user's profile has been migrated across to FS Logics. Absolutely, well, I'm going to say seamlessly. <laughs> it's a bit of a chew on, but there you go. That's it in action. And hopefully, if you are an Ivanti customer or an AppSense customer and you're thinking of making the move to FS Logics, then that's how you can do it. Thanks very much.